what we'd do, I've actually brought with me my timing equipment to do a 0-60 uh, test on this. 0-60, here we go. I don't think that's too bad. 0-60 in... So welcome back to the channel and welcome back to a freezing March morning. It's absolutely bitter, that wind. I've come out thinking it had turned spring already and I've been sorely disappointed. But what I'm not disappointed about is I have in front of me the new Triumph Tiger 660 Sport. Now this is the new bike to the market. These have only just come out. I think they're just hitting dealers about now. This is based on the Trident 660 which came out last year huge success for triumph so what they've done is they've taken that base platform they've put it on stilts they've beefed it up a little bit put a screen on it more of a comfortable seat options for panniers and they're calling this a sort of a mini adventure bike but what i like about it and why it's called the sport is because it still has the 17 inch front wheel and decent michelin fairly sticky decent tires so this morning if I can warm myself up, we're going to take this out for a little bit of a thrash around the countryside and we're going to see just how sporty this new Tiger Sport is. Chopsy, roll the intro. Jeez, cold freezing. Right, jumping aboard, let's first off start her up, pull the clutch. And before we go anywhere, you know what we've got to do? Let's do a very quick noise test. <laughs> Sounds a bit throaty. So the 660 Tiger Sport, as I mentioned, this uses the same engine and the same platform as the Trident, basically. I rode the Trident probably similar time last year, actually. And I really liked it. I only had a very quick go on it. I had it for a week. I did a couple of rides on it. I didn't do much with it, but for a budget sort of entry level A2 compatible bike, it was very impressive. So for this year, what Triumph have done is sort of built on that success from the Trident and basically tried to, you know, the Trident was a bit of a sort of naked sort of calf, sort of retro-y styled bike wasn't it so what Triumph have tried to do is take that platform and make it better for long distance basically you know more of a commuter machine more of a, a travel bike you know with options for panniers and all that sort of stuff but first off as regular viewers will know I'm a big old unit I'm six foot two I'm about 20 stone just under now on a bit of a diet thank you very much but uh, you know so this I'm, a, I'm probably not the target audience for this bike if I'm honest you know I suspect this is this is made for sort of younger riders if you like so probably not great big fat heifers like me and because it's uh, sort of a budget motorcycle and an entry level proper bike if you like let's call it at eight and a half thousand you know it's built to a budget of course it is so the suspension is decent upside down shower front forks I think they're 41 millimeter but they're completely unadjustable and the same with the rear shock you know a show a rear shock it's got a remote preload adjustment which is really nice which I'll show you on the walk around but it's you know it's, it's built to a bit of a budget so when they get a great big heifer like me on it when they set this up they've probably set it up for a much lighter rider than me it actually feels pretty nice and it's just got a sporty feel and what I really like is you know they've kept that 17 inch front wheel They've not been tempted to put a 19 on there and try and call it, you know, an adventure bike. They've got the 17, so it's got all of that road holding and agility that the uh, the Trident had really, but with a little, it's a, just a little bit higher and a little bit more leg room, and I think definitely more comfortable on the seating area. Braking is done by Nissan calipers up front, a couple of two pots, a surprising amount of power from that front end when i saw the brakes on this they were just two pots i thought mm, okay but that that is got a really nice feel to that brake and, and absolutely stacks of power stacks of power from that front end so the braking up front is actually really rather impressive and the rear is also nice and sharp as well so the brakes are absolutely excellent the feel and power belies the actual specification of them 
So that is actually uh, rather nice. Power. 81 horsepower is never going to set your world on fire. But I think what Triumph have done with this, they've geared it very, very well. It's, it's quite low, short geared. So it's making the most of that power. And if I'm in sixth gear at 40, I'm already doing almost 3,000 revs. So when you do go on the power in six, you've actually got a decent amount of pull without having to knock it down. But I think the disadvantage is going to be when you get it onto the motorway, it may not cruise particularly well. So we'll see what it cruises at at 70 on the motorway. But it's quite short geared, which means it makes it it's really lively to ride. And with those brakes, it does actually make quite a sporty setup, if I'm honest. I'm really quite surprised. God, there's absolutely stacks of power up front. Holds the road nicely, as I say, suspension is built to a budget, but they've, even with me on it, they've got it set pretty darn nicely. And the Michelin Road 5 tyres are a nice touch as well. A little bit of sticky Michelin rubber is never a bad thing. The dashboard is the same dashboard which was on the Trident. I, I quite like it, it's a mixture of LCD and TFT. Has everything you need on there, you know, gear indicator on the TFT section, time, fuel, range to empty, it's got everything you need, loads of information on that. I think the only thing it doesn't have is an outside air indicator but it's got everything else apart from outside air temperature. It even has some integration with your phone and stuff as well. I think you have to buy the module, the add-on module, but then you have some turn-by-turn -turn navigation for your phone and stuff like that. The bike has two engine maps, just a road and a rain mode. You know, it's, it's not over complicated. The throttle response is quite responsive. You know, it's, it's right there when you open the throttle. It's not snatchy. But it's, I'd say it's quite an aggressive throttle, a moderate throttle. It's not a lazy throttle by any means. It's, it's quite, uh, it's there, you know, it, it's right there when you open it. Precise, you know, you, it takes a little, I'm not even going to say finessing, but it's just, it's just responsive. Not snatchy, but responsive. And I think because it's quite low geared, you know, that adds to the responsiveness of the response. <laughs> That's a lot of responses. I've just pulled over to check my uh, my order is working on my, on my Hero, and I think it is. But these, these grips are on maximum, and even without my gloves on, I'm getting barely any heat through them. They, they, they've been on five minutes plus now. I mean, they may be grips that take a little bit longer to warm, but there's really not a lot of heat coming through those grips. Let's just check. I've got them maxed out. Yeah, it's definitely on max. There's three levels of heat on there. And uh, you ain't going to fry any eggs with it. <laughs> Look at that power in first gear. It's got a stack of power. <coughs> 81 horsepower. When did eight? Well, how, how is this only 81 horsepower? It's got a real punch to it, this surprising a real surprising amount of punch yeah my first impressions of this is it's actually really good it's exceeded my expectations so far the screen is also adjustable one hand up and down that's you know with it up that's a decent bit of uh, screenage out front isn't it we'll test where the wind is when we get on the motorway so let us take her up the hill climb i'm just going to wait for some of these cars to to go there was also some issues with trees down on this road from from the storm there's a lot of trees so let's just see it looks like they're still in the road a little bit up here let me just wait for those cars to bugger off let's put her for her paces oh, it's a little bit wet the trees have been down there's a lot of uh, it's not going to be ideal today See how she feels on her side a little bit. It does get maybe a little bit wallowy when you really start to push on a little bit more. You know, I think it's got a lot of performance there, but 
you know, it is a budget bike at the end of the day, but it, yeah, it's got a nice feel to it actually. Very confidence inspiring, a lot of that's probably due to those Michelins, but yeah, it, it's agile, it handles, it gives good feedback from the road actually as well. You get a lot of feedback, again, could be the tyres, but I'm getting a lot of feedback from the, the texture of the tarmac, so you know where the grip is, you get a good feeling of grip. So that's, you know, that builds confidence and decent brakes, you know, that, that's how you build confidence in, in make, making you, enabling you to push a motorcycle on and, and go a little bit quicker with it and get those rewards, that excitement from it. It's, <laughs> it's good, yeah, it's good. My only criticism so far is if I'd paid the extra £200 for these heated grips, I wouldn't be particularly impressed because they're really not very warm. I'm to really grip the bars to get the heat, to feel the heat through my gloves. I've only got the Covert Mark 3s on, which are a mid-season glove, you know, they're not full-on winter gloves. Hey, do you mind? Cheeky buggers. What we do, I've actually brought with me my timing equipment to do a 0-60 uh, test on this with my draggy. So let me uh, power up the draggy and we'll do a little 0-60 speed test on this. It'll be quite interesting actually to see how it compares to some of the electric bikes I've done speed testing on. And I think I've also done like the V-Strom 1050. Let's get the draggy out, let's see how she performs in a drag racing scenario. This is the draggy unit, the little GPS module. This has to stick somewhere metal and, uh, or steel, should I say. The tank must be plastic. I'm getting nothing there. <laughs> the only bit of metal, like even the bars are aluminium. Oh yeah, there we go. Might have to go on top of the brake reservoir. I think we need a rock. Let's put that in there. In my ultimate add-ons mount. Right. This bike also has an option for a quick shifter and blipper. This doesn't have it. This doesn't have the optional quick shift and blipper. So that's something also worth pointing out. You can get that. I actually spec'd up one of these to the spec I'd have, you know, with uh, a quick shift of blipper and the heated grips and the panniers, and it came in about nine six. So one of these, everything you really want, panniers, heated grips, quick shift of blipper, it came in at 9.6, so an extra thousand or so for those X's, which I didn't think was too bad. Right, okay, this is slightly downhill, so it'll give it a little bit of an advantage, but let's see how she performs. <laughs> terrible, terrible gear changes there. I'm going to do that again. I'm going to, I can do better than that. I'm going to do that again. 0 to 60, here we go. Ooh, it's surprisingly fast, this, you know. That was slightly uphill that time, so that, let's pull over, see what she managed it in. So what did we get here? We've got... A 0 to 60 in 4.67 seconds. So 0 to 60 in 4.67 seconds, even with a great big fatty on. So I don't think that's too bad. 0 to 60 in 4.67 seconds. Uh, let's see what we've done it on other bikes. The V-Strom did it in 4.96 seconds. That's the 1050 V-Strom. So it's quicker than a 1050 V-Strom. I'll flash it on the screen what the Energica did. I think it was, was it 3.81? The Energica, I've got a 3.81 here. Not too bad for a 20 stone fatty. So here she is, the Tiger Sport 660. Let's have a closer look at it. So up front we have some Nissan two-pot calipers. So you've only got two pistons per side on these and then the other side you've got another two. So you've got four pots in total. But they seem to bite really nicely. I think they've got a good choice of pad material. Here is that delicious 660 motor. Surprising amount of go from that motor. For 81 horsepower, this feels like a really quite quick, punchy bike. So uh, Triumph have worked their magic on this and it's got a decent pull. I think because of the way they've geared the bike, they've got this set up really rather nicely. 
Unfortunately, Triumph don't have any panniers available to give with these uh, demo bikes. It's a bit of a shame. I would have liked to have tried the, the pannier fitment, but you can see the fitment's here. And it does, you know, the bike still looks decent without panniers fitted. Sometimes these bikes, you know, by the time you put the panniers on, without the panniers on, they look a little bit weird. All the styling is built around them having panniers on. And when you take the panniers off, they look a bit odd. Nice little features is the uh, preload adjuster on the rear. Now, that's already, I've already maxed that out. We're already at maximum preload on the back there because I'm a fatty. No uh, centre stand, and I didn't see an option for a centre stand either because I think of the low slung sort of cat under the bike, you can't put a centre stand on it. I think the front end actually looks rather tasty. It's actually got quite a nice look, I think, this bike. Nicely styled, a modern sort of, a modern styling. You know, the screen integrates nicely with the front fit of the bike. And, uh, you know, you've got a decent size screen on there as well. The seat also, I mean, look, you've got a load of area to move around on the seat here and a reasonable sort of pillion area with the grab handles. And I've seen you can actually get a top box as well. They do a, top, a Triumph do an official top box option to mount to here as well with a rack. So, you know, they've really thought this out. Here is the dash, that mixture of LCD and TFT. I quite like that combination. I do like the dash on this bike. I think it's exactly the same as what the Trident had. And I think it works well. It's sort of simple, classy, got all the information you need. But there she is, a very quick closer look at the Trident 6. It's not a Trident, it's a Tiger Sport. Tiger Sport 660. Let's jump back on. So the baby Tiger Sport 660, I'm actually pretty impressed with this, you know. It's exceeded, I felt, you know, I saw a lot of the reviews that people did on this, you know, gushing over how good it was. Oh, it's so good. I thought, yeah, okay, it's probably all right. And it, it, it's exceeded my expectations, it is actually very good. And for £8,450, it doesn't feel like a budget motorcycle. There's hardly any vibration through the bike. There's a little bit of a, when the revs get quite high, you get a little bit of buzz through the seat, a little bit through the bars, but there's nothing really there. It even sounds pretty decent, to be fair. You know, you've got that lovely triple scream. I feel like I'm in Moto2. I have to say, They've done a good job, and you know, if I didn't like something, I would say. <laughs> and he can have speed it's got, just coming out of junctions like that. And because it's geared right, it's really peppy. I think peppy is the word. It's very peppy. Uh, I've got to find something bad to say about it. Can't all be good. Can't all be good. I don't like not having something to moan about. Clutch is nice, the gearbox feels nice. <sighs> I can't find nothing to complain about. I like the way your legs fit around the tank. It's very comfortable to grip with your legs. You don't have to hold on with your upper body. It's, it's a nicely fitted bike around your leg. You squeeze with your thighs, it fits really nicely around that tank. So, so the, ergo, the ergos on the bike, the position on the bike, feels very nice, very comfortable. I feel like I'm slotted in to the machine. I'm not sat on top of it, I'm slotted into it and I'm part of it. Let's take it through town, see if I can find anything wrong with it through town. Must be something wrong with this bike. Must be able to find something. I'm, I'm really, cl I'm clutching the straws here. But perhaps that sporty throttle response becomes means you have to finesse it quite a lot when you're in town. I'm being hypercritical. The gearbox is perhaps, you could say, a little bit notchy going in and out of gears. <laughs> Hello, love, yeah, you're coming out. Yeah, that, that could be a, a slight criticism. Yeah, I think that's the only criticism. That lovely, playful throttle response when you're on the back roads means you've got to finesse it a little bit when you're in town but pff, I'm clutching the straws <laughs> I'm clutching the straws neutral yeah even bangs into neutral easily as well <sighs> I don't know if I'm wrong with this so 70 miles an hour yeah five and a half thousand revs more or less at 70 
so but that's okay actually that's better than i thought it was going to be and there's no vibrations or anything at that speed it's a tiny little buzz to the bar but nothing through the bike if we push it to 80 that's 6,000 revs at 80 so 80 i would say is your maximum cruising speed on this bike but that's fine isn't it from a wind perspective i've got nothing here i'm starting to get wind here this is where the wind is and that's with the screen in the lower position let me move the screen right up now the wind is here right at the top of my helmet so that's that's really calm here now and again there's no buffeting even though that wind is here towards the top of my helmet if i was a bit shorter I'd, that's a very very good screen very very good can't even complain about the screen it's so sporty i think the quick shift and blipper would go nicely on it actually <laughs> it's a bit... well, that's the that's the uh, rev limiter the brakes are impressive you know the brakes are really impressive I'm surprised at the braking performance on this. I'm surprised at the agility. I'm surprised how good the suspension is. You know, for an eight and a half thousand pound motorcycle. I'm surprised how fast it is. I'm surprised how good it is. So there we are, the Tiger Sport. Thank you Triumph for loaning me this for a week to have a bit of fun on. It's impressive all of the people who were raving about it yeah yeah okay it's good i admit it it's good if you've enjoyed the video please consider subscribing i do a lot of bike reviews i do a sort of trips garage work tips and tricks and working on your bikes as well maintenance type videos what have i got coming up on the channel well we've got the next big hunts with me and bruce we're recording that on tuesday we're going into London for the best pie and mash. Best pie, mash and liquor. We're doing the old East End pie and mash shops. So we're recording that Monday. That is on, because we're going into London, we've got two electric motorcycles for that. We've got the Energica Rebel versus the Zero SRF, I think. So we've, uh, or was it the S? Can't remember, we always get those two mixed up. So we've got the Zero versus the Energica into London for as much pie and mash as we can possibly shovel down. So we'll let you know which is the best pie and mash shop in London. And uh, because all those shops are relatively close to each other, <laughs> I think there's gonna be a lot of food being consumed on Tuesday. So uh, that's to come, but I hope you enjoyed the video and if you haven't subscribed, please consider smashing that subscribe button and I'll see you on the next video, guys. Cheers. This is power level one, which is full power. <laughs> I could do that all day. What have you done here? <laughs> I told you I was scared back there. I've never dropped a bike before in my life. Oh! Backfire! That's it! That's it! <laughs> Listen to this.